Thank you so much, Janice, for the wonderful opening. I uh, I don't know whether that is hundred uh, percent true. <laughs> like, am, have, have I have I actually really done so much? Well, in fact, actually, I um, I am interested in to make it simple. I'm interested in things that don't make money. So, if, if you are here today for this uh, particular talk, it's either because you are my former colleagues, current colleagues, or you just are interested in computer games and you're not thinking about making money. Because none of the things I do makes makes money. Um, <laughs> seriously, seriously. You know we do things for passion, right? Yeah. Sometimes. Yes. Oh we can. Thanks. Thanks a lot for your support. Thank you. I'll pay you back later on though. I, I know I owe you ten bucks each. Um, so as mentioned here oh yeah I, and also I'm not expecting like a lot of audience here today because my talk is nothing about Gen AI, as you can see here. It's very empty room. Uh, the only thing that is related to Gen AI is the fact that my title uh, is sort of helped by um, you know, ChatGPT. Uh, to put down a prompt there and say, I want to present a talk with the following things, and can you make it like really smashing for me? And they gave me this title. So uh, in Ecolinguistics New Horizons, Digital Games as Catalyst for Ecolinguistics Research and Environmental Change. So, well, not a lot of audience. So I can tell ChatGPT, you didn't work well. You know, your limitations right there. Okay, but, um, so here's my, oh, sorry, let me just uh, full screen first. Not yet a full screen here. Okay, great. So the outline of this presentation is uh, for the introduction, and then uh, potential digital games in each, eco-linguistics, two case studies, plus the future directions and opportunities, then conclusions. So uh, there are only 10 slides, by the way. Only 10 slides, so this is going to be really quick. Um, so introduction, what is ecolinguistics? Ecolinguistics, according to the International Ecolinguistics Association, is the exploration of the role of language in the life-sustaining interactions of humans, uh, other species, and the physical environment. So basically anything to do with um, you know, the environment and language, they are ecolinguistics already. And as you can see here in point number two, maybe they're considered as, they may be considered as a subdiscipline of critical discourse analysis, the CDA. So if you know CDA, probably that is uh, a great you know, venue or topic to go into these days. I'll explain to you why that's going to be very important. Uh, despite all that, the, the whole ecolinguistics definition is highly contested, even within the field. So there are, there are uh, researchers and scholars who think it should be in the CDA. Some scholars think that it should be separated from CDA. Some people think that it should, it should be on top of CDA. So there are a lot of arguments there, but okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's the in development. So general, uh, generally, researchers and studies look at uh, company reports, public speeches, news reports, you know, the kind of things where, say, fossil fuel companies will release things, and then, okay, so we linguists go and dig it up, download the paper, you know, boring stuff. I mean, <laughs> boring stuff. So how can we make this like, really interesting? Um, First thing here, we need to know is this, this, the message or the, the, the little line in the middle. It is, there's a growing role of digital games in various domains, uh, including education and research. And this is one I have to come back over here, um, just to show you some uh, information about it. This is coming from the two, uh, 2021 Essential Facts by the uh, Entertainment Software uh, Association. Um, basically, what they're telling you are is, um, so they, they did them some surveys and studies uh, of the players during COVID, and this, these are the, their comments or feedback. So, uh, for example, they have taught um, the computer games have taught me uh, how to collaborate with others and be culturally sensitive. So you can, when you see these words, you kind of know. All right, there are some something that we can do uh, with games. Sorry, they are fun, and exciting ways. So we talked about engagement and motivation. Definitely, games are great. Uh, video games have uh, educational elements. I really like to. Uh, let me get to as a history nerd, so you can use history on various topics that you can uh, actually think about using games. And then, oops, sorry, some statistics for you. In terms of games, I mean, ChatGPT or Gen AI is, is huge, right, as we all know. But do you know that in terms of the number of gamers in the world, we're looking at by countries, and this, these are the numbers. I'm not sure whether ChatGPT, Gen AI have been used by that many people, but look at China alone, six, over 600 million players uh, in, you know, using games. Uh, and USA came coming third, all right, and then subsequent countries. So you look at the amount of um, people playing, number of people playing, and look, just think about the revenue. 
And that's why that's why Tencent, the company, is you know is, is huge. One thing that Tencent does very well is their mobile gaming. Um, <clears throat> how different uh, institutes use um, computer games? So we have the San Antonio Museum of Arts using Animal Crossing to promote their uh, their arts pieces. We also have Stanford University using Animal Crossing to uh, bring in speakers, so virtual speakers. If you like the metaverse thing here, uh, then you have uh, you know renowned speakers going uh, playing in the game and then and then and giving speeches. So not like me and you doing face to face now, but using avatars to represent. And then the the audience can interact on the island and do whatever they want and, and cheer and do emotions. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, at CAS we also use Animal Crossing uh, crossover with some of our students to. Uh, promote like to promote learning transfer. Uh, we actually made videos for that, and we put this into um, our course Moodle, so that uh, basically everybody who studies our fundamental course CS one thousand, the the, the core in university English course, will they have to watch this? Um, anyway. yeah. And I, 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 I'm also part of the the team that uh, that uh, is responsible for this particular project. So the premise for today is basically exploring how digital games can serve as catalysts for eco-linguistics research uh, and you know, triggering uh, environmental change. And this is another example of, uh, of my favorite uh, villager called Dome. You know, I like I like my the name of my muscles. Thanks, <laughs> Abigail Abdul Laver. My abs. Just, you know, very creative. All right. Um, so the potential of digital games in eco-linguistics. Right. Okay. Um, so the catalyst part is basically the, for for researchers. Okay, for researchers, the, the catalyst part is the ease of textual and uh, data collection, because all you have to do is just say, for example, you go to your favorite game, and then there are some fan sites, right? That basically you can download the whole script from here. Uh, uh, these 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 uh, information or the data um, either can be. Uh, or for example, like RPG, not 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 research postgrads, uh, but this time it's uh, role playing games, uh, are freely available online, and they are peer reviewed by these diehard community members. So we don't need to worry about the accuracy of the things that you download. Uh, they are extremely fun to work with. So talking about motivation, you don't know how to motivate students. What we have here. Uh, a set of range of approaches. So eco linguistics is very widely um, like like. Uh, accepting, uh, so you can use any different approaches to to analyze your text. There is no like you, you can be a social linguist and you can you can you can you can you can, where's my mouse cursor? Okay. This is so much so much for computer science background. Okay, so uh, and then popular areas of eco linguistic studies in uh, digital games include the following things. You know, player ethics. If you like ethics in Gen you can have player ethics here. Uh, you can talk about politics, economies, politics more, tourism, of course, climate change. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a variety of um, of possibilities that you can uh, use digital games for uh, research. Okay, uh, then we get some quotes here because no point if I am the person only you know the only person telling you. So we have uh, I don't know how to pronounce names, uh, but Elznik Reckon promotes the use of simulation games to address the issue of climate change. So make it really simple here. Um, uh, basically, gaming simulations of a toolbox that can be particularly useful for analysis to teach alternative and complementary views of climate change. Games can simulate quite complex actors' relations between nation states. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, they can focus on individual behaviors. They can also teach politics affairs. Games can offer new ways to raise awareness and empower people to deal with climate change. So, a lot of opportunities there. Uh, we have uh, Eng. Eng is. Uh, Forgot his university, but he's one of us. You know, one of Hong Kong, Hong Kong universities. Oh, City U, I think City U. Uh, so then, the studies found that while fantasies and enjoyment gratifications were positively associated with pro-animal attitudes, fantasies and social gratifications were positively correlated with pro-environmental behaviors. Uh, when I look at this, I did not know what that, what that means. So I I copied and pasted it to ChatGPT, and then ChatGPT asked ChatGPT to, to unpack this for me. Uh, basically, what that means is the more happy you are. With the games, you basically be, become a better person and when you treat animals and when you treat the environment. See? Power of ChatGPT. Really nice. Okay? Um, so, two case studies, very quickly. One is uh, by Paul and Sprangler. Basically, what they looked at is they looked at Animal Crossing New Leaf. 
Uh, and then they do they did uh, some uh, linguistic slash multimodal analysis of the marketing materials, for example, and they found there's a dichotomy of the of between the developed and non-developed area, the non-developed space. So they look at this and they say, well, the left side is not developed, the right side is developed. So in the sense that the game is trying to tell you that they are animals and humans are in harmony, but at the same time. Um, that basically we are erasing ecological well-being from the consideration in the sense that you know if you want to be good at the game you have to destroy the environment in order to build a modern city then you can earn money you can be, be in harmony with with, with the villages so, you know that kind of thing so um, you know messages you can you can look at multimodal um, things and you can also look at game dialogue so and another part of it we have. I mean, as the researchers, they found that certain characters in the game and the dialogue that they said are basically illustrating uh, the stance of ecological well-being um, or maybe against ecological well-being. So, uh, how that's being uh, construed through the games itself. So, it doesn't mean that the game itself is really, you know, very environmental looking. It will be environmental. Okay, this one is my current study. I'm still figuring out, and I get, I got a lot of help from from. Uh, Eric here because he gave me personal comments on my paper, okay. uh, which which is great. But anyway, so what I did is here I, I looked at uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. Does anybody play this game? Anybody know this game? Okay, I thought I was like very good, very good. Okay, cool, cool. At least you know the game. Um, that's great. <laughs> the game actually centers around uh, like a concept called Marco. Marco is a fictional natural resources, and I found that it's actually a euphemism uh, of fossil fuel, but. Uh, well, so give you some context of the game. So we have uh, basically we have two two parties. One is the mega corporation, and the second one is the rebel group who's trying to try to bring down this mega corporation. So we look at the language here. This boss' sole purpose is to train the planet dry. Why you sleep? Why you eat? Why you sit? It is sucking up Marco. It doesn't rest and it doesn't care. You do realize what Marco is, don't you? Marco is the lifeblood of our world. The planet bleeds green like you and me bleed red. The hell you think's gonna happen when it's all gone, huh? Answer me! You gonna stand there and pretend you can't hear the planet crying out in vain? I know you can! You really hear that? Damn straight I do! Get out. <laughs> so. So you can see that in the game dialogue. This is the kind of conversation that you pick up from that, uh, and that's the rhetoric for the for the rebel group, who's uh, really against, uh, who's really against it, the, the the company. So here's another one that's from the perspective of the company. This time. Alright, not much time left, so we're fast forward a little bit, hopefully. This is Midgar, our home. We created in one ten thousand scale. As you can see here, eight micro reactors are running around the center of our city and keep Midgar running day and night. So this is the company's promotion. Which flows beneath our streets is a truly limitless resource. At Shimra, we've developed technologies to extract it and transform it into a fuel and electricity that powers everything we do. Thanks to the miracle of Mako Energy, our lives are richer and better than ever before. Mako keeps our lights on at night and made Midgar into the sea that never sleeps. A triumph of technology and testament to man's potential. Okay, so if you're a linguist, then you'll realize that, you know, it, it, this is like very different use of vocabulary, mm -hmm. right? In, in terms of the, 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 the attitudes or differences. Okay, so I have one minute left. I'm going to give you some really quick uh, overview. But basically, what I found is that in the game dialogue, we can, uh, what I found is there are uh, very different use of vocabulary uh, in, in the two parties. Basically, they're almost like mutually exclusive. Words that used by the rebel group is not the group, that's not the words of vocabulary that's been used by the companies. Uh, and, you know, if you're the language, you can look at these patterns and you'll see that. Like, they're mutually exclusive almost uh, perfectly. So, and, and you know, the concept is not very different from what we see these days. You know, look at uh, maybe Esso Mobile and, they, uh, and uh, reports coming out from there. What kind of words they use or the lexicon they use. 
um, when they sell their products, uh, the oil, petrol, you know, and, and then we look at the environmentalists, and they have different, they also have different views uh, on in terms of usage. So that's very relevant to our current day. Uh, therefore, my my second final slide is basically uh, as applied linguists, what can you do with, uh, with with the audience? Well, you can explore and tap the potential of digital games in eco linguistics research. You can maybe just discuss the challenges, the barriers that might be needed uh, that we'll face when doing these research. You can also propose strategies for further digital games uh, practices and in education. You can apply all these a lot of these concepts in education and teaching class, and also encourage participation collaborations. So, you know, if your topic for, say, um, a basic, a basic um, English course, uh, you could actually use some of these texts, right, from a game, dialogue, and then you say you can analyze this, and then you write your own paper about it. You know, it can also be that. that that's like a, a good medium to approach, uh, get you know, increased engagement of students. Um, and so, final thing is that this is the number of games released on Steam alone, this platform, uh, based on the years. You can see that. On one platform alone, every year we get like over 12,000 uh, games released. So we have not even considered the things like Xbox or Switch or other things. Okay, so my conclusion here is basically I showcase two uh, case studies, cover some future directions for you, and also maybe shed light on the transformative power of digital games and possibly um, you know, inviting you to join this, this, this uh, field of research, exciting research. And that's all. Thank you very much. So I'll, I'll go, right? Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, now we never lack examples for research, and this is definitely an exciting field.